In this video, I'll show how I modeled up a classic outdoor bench for the school. The school decided on a picture that I need to import into SketchUp. The option for import that I'll use is Use as a Matched Photo. The first thing to do is to locate this origin at a convenient corner of the bench. Then arrange the green and red perspective bars along axes of the bench. Here are the green perspective bar and now I'll move the red direction and locating here at the back corner and then another red direction on the back edge of the seat and the other green I'll just put it here and actually that looks real good because my blue vertical axis is right on the top edge so I, I can click done on the match photo um, dialog box. With the line tool I'm going to create a backdrop, a, a palette, a rectangular face on the blue-green axis on which to trace over the shape of the side. And I'll make that a, I'll make that face a group so that it doesn't get mixed up with lines for the shape of the side. Now I'll start the side and there's a back edge here at an angle up to this joint right here th that connection and then I'll come over uh, uh, to define that top edge of that flat of the side that on which the seat sits. There is a slope here. It's not on the green axis. There is a slope of the seat so that water will run off. And then I can continue with the line tool and then the arc tool to define this front shape of the side. I don't try to be real exact with these things at this point. Here's a little straight edge. I guess I'll have it on that axis and again start with the the uh, arc tool. Come down here and bring that in to about there. And now I'm going to need a tangent and it's shown in the cyan color. and one more arc down to the ground. You want to make sure that you're staying on that face, that palette, that backdrop. And I've got a line that comes across back to the starting point. Now I should have a face defined for the lower half of the side. Yes, it's here. And I can go ahead and make that a component called side and we can continue to model up the side. I'll edit the component. Here's an arc cut out in the bottom and I can delete a line down there so that is open and then I can continue with the top part of the side. Starting at that junction I've got a straight line coming up high about, about there. And then we've got an arc for the top of the side. Oh, I don't 
I don't that arc isn't working very well um, I'm gonna come back and delete that last arc and start it over again not go quite as far down up here stop it up here it is tangent cyan color now I should get a cyan color yes for the continuation of that slight arc don't go down too far because I got a straight line I need to place at that point coming down here and it's good to zoom in on these when you're doing this tracing got an arc and I want a tangent and I can come down with a vertical line to connect to our previous line and we should have the upper part of that component defined yes and I can well I I was going to erase that center line there but so that it was just one I may want that line for some reason so I'm gonna just leave it there for the time being there is a cutout the back of the of the bench is dovetailed into the back and here is a cutout Um, actually, yeah, okay, I'll just drop that line out, and I've got that cut out defined for the, for the back. Close that component, and let's, uh, let's define the seat. As I mentioned, there is a slope on that seat so that water will drain backward and the seat comes back here and then comes straight up and then I need a parallel line I'll use the guide the tape measure to create a guideline that is parallel to that top edge of the side right there and now I can come back out on that guideline defining the thickness of the seat and the front of the seat is an arc shape rounded and I can come back this location later on there'll be a part of that seat that extends beyond the side we can do that later but right now I want it positioned and get its thickness in proportion to everything else uh, and I make it a component and then we can push pull at this point back to the other side of the bench okay so we've got two components sorted out and back here we've got a, a back piece a back rail maybe I should use a tape measure to get a parallel line here make sure I get a parallel edge now I can come down with my line tool and there'll be a little bead I can put on later. Right now I just want to get the basic shapes and connections of these components. And we should have a face. Yes, I'll make that a component called back rail. And I can push pull that back to the to the other side of the bench
Okay, so we've got a we got three components defined. Uh, there's one more component that I want to pick up here, and that is the front rail. We can see where it protrudes through the side piece, and it is also dovetailed. I'll make the dovetail later, and I'll use the guideline, the tape measure tool to get a parallel guideline and draw over that cutout area of the side. And I've got a parallel line. It showed up as magenta. And it's wanting to go on the green axis. I don't want it to go on the green axis because there's a slope here. So zoom in. Now I should have the face. I'll define, set that as a component called front rail. And I'll push, push it back to the other side. Okay, um, so if I orbit with the mouse, then the picture temporarily disappears, leaving the components that were traced over. Here's the assembly of rough parts and shapes. The original rectangular palette can be deleted Also, I forgot to give the side a thickness, so I can do that now. Let's get rid of that edge on the face of the side. It should not be there. Now I'm picking up in one click and push-pull. Actually, that cutout will be wrong because that's going to be a dovetail cutout in the back. Uh, so I'll work that out later, get rid of all the guidelines, this rough structure is just a start but facilitates the ongoing work to complete the design. Also, I have not scaled the model. It is way oversized. I would do that using the tape measure and fixing based on, a, uh, on the seat height that I want. That will resize the entire model to its actual size. I worked on this to complete the bench model and will copy it into this picture so you can see the embellishments and the final joinery. Our woodworking group will complete this project in Redwood and it will sit outdoors at the school.